Hello, George Romanich here. In today's video, we are going to talk about the rates of evaporation and condensation, as well as the concept of equilibrium of water, vapor, and liquid water. From my extensive playlist on kinetic theory of gases, we know that temperature is nothing more but jiggling of molecules and atoms that are making up air. High temperature, a lot of jiggling. Low temperature, not so much jiggling. But we also know that distribution of jiggling, namely distribution of velocities in a gas, is described by Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution, which means that not all molecules have same velocity. Some are, move, some are moving faster, some are moving slower. Well, kinetic theory of gases and Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution do not apply directly to liquids, but there are still some conclusions we can draw even for liquids. In liquids, kinetic theory of gases doesn't work because molecules of water, let's say, in liquid state, are really close together, on top of each other, like snakes in a den. And then when they roll on top of each other, electrical attractions and exchange of momentum or any other property in liquid is highly dependent on these electrical intermolecular forces, and that is not accounted for in kinetic theory of gases, and therefore that theory doesn't apply. But, even in liquids, some molecules are rolling faster than the others, which means there is distribution of velocities. And now you will see how that distribution of velocities results in evaporation of liquid, and moreover, how evaporation decreases temperature of liquid water. Consider a case where we have this Well, let's make it bigger. We have this nice container with solid lid on top of it. And let us say here we have liquid water inside. Initially, air is completely dry. And here is liquid water below this blue line. And this is at time T0. As I just said, this liquid water molecules are rolling on top of each other. Now, let us say we have two of these molecules. This one is about to go towards dry air at this velocity indicated with the length of this arrow. And imagine here we have another molecule of liquid water going in the same direction but slower. Velocity probability of this one escaping liquid water is higher than the probability of this one because this one is moving faster. So in that sense, the, this one might actually leave liquid water and end up here as dry, in the dry air, resulting in one water vapor molecule in dry air. This one, on the other hand, might bounce off of the surface of the water or collide with some other one before it has chance to go to dry air and return into liquid water. So what we conclude here, of course, is that the faster the molecules are moving in this liquid water, the higher the chance of evaporation. <laughs> but we know that if we have hot water, that hot water really evaporates fast. Why? Well, because there is a lot of fast-moving guys that can escape water. We also know now, this is very important, that evaporation decreases temperature of water. Why? Because it is most likely that the molecules that are escaping are fast-moving one, which means the one that stayed are slow-moving one. And slow-moving one means low temperature. That is the process by which evaporation decreases temperature of the medium. So in this case, you can see, I can indicate perhaps with this green color, that we have net evaporation. Now, let us replicate this figure here. I have the same container, it should be a little bit wider. 
I have the same container with this solid lid on top, but because there was a lot of evaporation over here, now the line of liquid water should really go a little bit here. There is less liquid water, but now I have water vapor molecules in the air, which means now I have moist air. Air is no longer dry. However, imagine that I have in blue, again, this many molecules escaping liquid water, let us say three, but at the same time there is this one returning into liquid water. Well, some of them are evaporating, some of them are condensing, but clearly more is evaporating than condensing, so I could also say I have net evaporation, but in this case net evaporation, this, oops, I need green, this arrow for net evaporation should be smaller than that arrow because now I also have some condensation that is happening. So while overall there is net evaporation, not at a rate that I had here. And finally, let us conclude now this thought experiment with the case where I have this same, so this is time T1, now at time T2 I have this same container with, because I had net evaporation still in this case, that means that the line of liquid water moved even further down, and now I have very moist air over here with a lot of water vapor molecules. Some of them are removing, are uh, returning to liquid, and let's say for good measure we have three also that are evaporating. In this case we have equilibrium. There is no evaporation, there is no, sorry, there is no net evaporation, there is no net condensation. For every molecule that evaporates there is another molecule that condenses on average, which means this is now equilibrium. Equilibrium of what? Equilibrium of moist air that contains water vapor here and liquid water underneath. And we would call this condition as saturated air. So in this one drawing we describe the concept of dry air above liquid water, then moist air above liquid water and saturated air above liquid water. And we also see how evaporation decreases temperature of a medium. Condensation on the other hand increases temperature of a medium. Now, if you are looking at this, you might say, yeah, this is all good, Professor Romanich, but I don't remember seeing these containers in the atmosphere running around, and how does this process, how is this process occurring in real atmosphere? There is no container, there is no pre-existing liquid water that we can attach to this condensation and evaporation. Well, Liquid water in the atmosphere forms on suspended particles of dirt, pollen, salt, and so on, and we call these particles aerosols. Let us look how condensation is more likely on these particles of aerosols if the temperature is low. And we know that and when we decrease temperature of media of air, we have condensation. Why condensation is more likely or rather happens when we decrease temperature of the air? Now you will understand it. Let us look in two conditions. Condition number one and condition number two. I have this big aerosol you can imagine whatever for, for now I will talk about aerosols but just 
suspended particle of dirt in the air. And let us assume I have this water vapor molecule, H2O, that is moving towards this aerosol. But let us say that this represents cold air. Cold air means low temperature. Now I will replicate this same figure over here. I have this aerosol, same aerosol, and I have this same and I have this same water vapor molecule, H2O. But because here I will have warm air. You know from my kinetic theory of gases playlist that in warm air it is more likely that this water vapor molecule is moving very fast, which I indicate with longer arrow compared to this arrow over here. I can make this one even shorter just to amplify this effect. Now, you already see where this is going. If we have very warm air, probability of this H2O molecule bouncing off and moving in this direction is very high. Because it's moving very fast, so, so it has difficulty attaching itself to this aerosol. But in the case of low temperature, cold air, when this guy comes in contact with this aerosol, it has high chance of being attached to it. You can also see, I'm not going to talk about this now, I'll just mention it, that this process also depends on physical chemical properties of aerosols. Some aerosols like to catch water. They, are, they have affinity towards water and these are the ones that are more likely to form liquid water around them. Now, from here, I have another H2O molecule. This one will also hit aerosol and stay attached. From here, there is another one moving maybe even slower. This one will also attach. Uh, this one will also attach. And then another one will attach to this. And I start having a film of liquid water around this aerosol. Something that is not happening here. Why not? because of kinetic theory of gases. Because in warm air, there is higher probability of molecules moving fast and their hands with aerosols, so to speak, don't grab. That is not the case in cold air, of course. Now, this is qualitatively description of these two processes. Later in thermodynamics playlist, I will quantify all of these, but I think it's very important to have this basic physical understanding of how this process works before we go into quantitative thermodynamics story. I also hope that now you appreciate my very long list on kinetic theory of gases. You see, kinetic theory of gases, I told you, is not fundamental to study atmospheric sciences, and we do not even cover it in most cases in the classical courses in atmospheric sciences. But if you want to understand the process of atmospheric thermodynamics and how these things happen like a real person, then you should study kinetic theory of gases. It gives you such a beautiful insight when you know what is temperature, when you know what is pressure within the concept of kinetic theory of gases. It is so easy to then understand this because this is what we discussed when I talked about collision between molecules and a wall, how many molecules are hitting wall. Well, look at this. If I give you now dimension of this aerosol, you can calculate how many H2O molecules are hitting this aerosol in a unit uh, time. I just need to give you temperature of the air because you know kinetic theory of gases. So before going into thermodynamics, I suggest you follow my playlist on kinetic theory of gases. In my next video, we will expand on the concept of saturation vapor pressure. Until then, goodbye.